I'd like to welcome Dr. Peter Jones. He is director of the USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center and distinguished professor of urology and biochemistry and molecular biology at the Keck School of Medicine at USC. He is also the H. Leslie Hoffman and Elaine S. Hoffman Chair in Cancer Research. He is past president of AACR, and Dr. Jones' talk is DNA Methylation and Nucleosome Repositioning in Cancer. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Would you begin by describing your methodology to simultaneously map nucleosomal positioning and DNA methylation on individual molecules of DNA? Yes, so what, what we have realized is that DNA is actually wrapped up uh, in the nucleus of a cell around a structure called a nucleosome, uh, which has about 146 base pairs of DNA wrapped twice around a ball of, nucleus, uh, of histones, and we call that a nucleosome. Now, the DNA has chemical marks on it, uh, met DNA methylation, and so what we want to know is what is the function of that methylation, and how does it communicate to the nucleosome? The reason why this is important is that the nucleosome is very refractory to gene expression. So nucleosomes actually block access of the various transcription factors and so on to the DNA. And so what we think happens is that the DNA methylation talks to the nucleosomes in a way that allows them to change their position and thus either switch genes off or switch genes on. So how do you figure out where they are? Well, um, the standard way is to dice them up with enzymes that's chopped between the nucleosomes. Literally cut them into little pieces and look at all the pieces and try and figure out what's going on. Um, our methodology, what we have done, is to change a um, approach that we use in the field of DNA methylation uh, called bisulfite sequencing. And we use an enzyme from a bacteria that we actually infuse into the nucleus of a cell after we've popped the cell open. And this uh, enzyme marks the DNA where, it, where there are no nucleosomes. It leaves a little chemical tag on them. And so what we can do is then take the DNA from that uh, uh, experiment and amplify it up many, many times. So we can actually see two things at the same time. On one molecule of DNA, we can see where the methylation is that the cell put on the DNA. And then we can see where the nucleosomes are or were by the pattern which is left by the second enzyme, which is the bacterial enzyme. So it allows us to look at both things at the same time, and it's really important because um, as we um, uncover the kinds of things that go wrong in cancer, it's coming very clear, and this is all just over the last year or two, that the enzymes, the machines that move the nucleosomes around are very often uh, mutated in human cancer, completely unexpectedly. So what we find is, is that the little machines that move these little balls around are really important, and if you have a mutation in one, you end up getting cancer. And so what you've done is you've destroyed the interaction and the talking between the DNA methylation and the nucleosome positioning. What were your results with 5 aza nucleoside treatment? It does more than inhibit DNA methylation. Well, um, what's interesting is these uh, drugs, these 5 aza nucleosides, um, we've been working with them for... 35 years, and they now are used in a clinic to treat uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. Um, they're very pure inhibitors of, of DNA methylation. In other words, they um, uh, surgically, so to speak, inhibit DNA methylation and only DNA methylation. And so the question is, how does this inhibition of one part of the epigenetic code lead to the activation of genes, which is what they do? So what we've done is to look very carefully at how taking one part of the process, which is the DNA methylation and inhibiting, leads to a whole orchestrated event which results finally in the activation of genes. And so the key finding is, is that when you inhibit the DNA methylation, you actually change the nucleosomal distribution in the region. Uh, nucleosomes get evicted uh, from the start, the start site of the gene, and then you get gene expression. And you might say, well, why the heck would you want to know that? Well, <laughs> the reason why you'd want to know it is because if you want to come up with better drugs, uh, you need to know how they work at a very fine level. And so the idea is in the future, maybe we can combine different drugs, which might accelerate the eviction of the nucleosome, which is a key event involved in activating the gene. 
Could you also expound a bit about how your research has led to the development of 5-Aza cytidine and how it's being used in cancer treatment today? Well, our, our research, which goes back a long time, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, showed that uh, these Aza nucleoside drugs um, actually are very powerful inhibitors of DNA methylation. And I've just explained to you how they um, activate genes by removing nucleosomes uh, from the start site. Um, and we've known for a long time that they're very effective inducers of gene expression. Uh, so clinical trials were conducted over the last 10 to 15 years, which have showed that this type of approach, an approach which we call epigenetic therapy, actually is effective in the treatment of patients with myelodysplastic syndrome. So it's very exciting because this drug now is the standard of care for that disease. It's a disease of the elderly. It is a pre-leukemic condition and it almost universally progresses to acute myelogenous leukemia, which kills the patient. And so this drug can really, um, uh, in, in some cases, double the life expectancy of patients with the disease. Now, what we're trying to do in the next phase, and this is part of our dream team, um, Stand Up to Cancer dream team, uh, with Steve Balin and I, what we're trying to do is to try and come up with a way to actually use these drugs in the treatment of solid cancers. And that's what we're very excited about. And so we want to try over the next few years and see if we can impact solid tumors as well as liquid tumors. In general, what are the implications for exploiting DNA methylation for clinical benefit? Well, there, there are many implications to exploiting DNA methylation. And the first is the, in the area of cancer detection. There are companies now that are making tests which can detect methylated DNA in the blood. So a blood test for cancer, particularly colorectal cancer, would be terrific. Um, and so those, that, that would be one. The other is, is that these epigenetic defects are almost universally seen in cancer. And these drugs can reverse them. And so there's a, a tremendous amount of interest here, yeah, not only in the DNA methylation inhibitors, but also in other uh, drugs which would interfere with epigenetic processes. So the idea is, again, to target these nucleosomes, which bear the marks, and to come up with drugs which can actually eventually cause them to be moved around. What is it like, personally, to be a leader in the field of DNA modifications like methylation? Um, how has DNA methylation changed the approach that researchers have taken in regards to drug development? Well, it's uh, incredibly gratifying to see after this amount of time that these drugs are, first of all, used in the clinic, uh, and also that our scientific colleagues now um, uh, have accepted the idea uh, that DNA methylation alterations are, play a major role in the genesis of most kinds of cancer. So up until now, most of the focus has been on the genetics of cancer. You mutate the gene, the gene doesn't work, you lose a gene, you don't have the gene, you get cancer. Uh, this kind of approach is a little bit different. What it suggests is, is that there are... Um, uh, important genes which can be switched off in a way that they cannot be used. And so that can give rise to cancer if it's a tumor suppressor gene, for example. And the advantage of that is, is that you have a perfectly good gene sitting in the nucleus, but it's switched off. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is now with these drugs, we can turn them back on again. And that's what we're trying to do. So it's very, very gratifying after all this time, not only to have the drug approved, but to have huge interest in the scientific community. Dr. Jones, thank you so much. Oh, it's a real pleasure. Thank you.